Foot, foot, nerds. Welcome back to another episode and another issue of Words with Nerds. As always, it is the Triple S crew. It's me, Sundance Kid himself, aka Spider Man or DJ, whatever. It is me, Slick. Was just as confused as you guys when I turned on the camera, Vic. And what's up, guys? It's me, Space Case, aka Vince. I'm trying to think of what villain or Spider-Man character I look most like. I don't know, probably Kingpin, like Vulture, King, Kingpin or Vulture. Yeah, awesome. Both bald characters. Thanks for reminding me, guys. I mean, just <laughs> wait. Uh, not as bad as the one time you asked the bartender that bald question. Oh my God! Yeah, one time I asked a bartender who was bald before I decided that I was gonna shave my head and go bald. I said, "Hey, man, you know." What was it like when you finally decided to go bald? And he gave me a dirty ass look. And me and Victor don't go to that bar anymore. Honest question. Just curious. What's it feel like? Man, I really like that bar. Speaking of what's it feel like, uh, DJ, how's it feel without the mask? I can breathe. <laughs> okay. That thing that's was cool. that's good. That's a good that start. That thing was super hot. I can't believe I thought I was going to keep that on the whole episode. Yeah, right. No. As way. a matter of fact, right. while while I change out of this uh, extremely tight, very tight, I don't know how I'm going to get this off costume. Uh, maybe the boys over here can tell you what exactly we're going to be talking about. We got you. We got you. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about <laughs> it. All right, David's going to step away to. Uh, Go back to his normal uh, DJ mode. What was that? Who's? It was him ripping the costume off. Oh my god! <laughs> Clickety clack. Um. So yeah, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another issue. This is issue fifty-four. Um. We are here today to talk about a classic Marvel film. It's not too old, but it's old enough to where we've probably watched it a hundred times each. Um. We're talking about Spider-Man into the Spider Verse. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Victor, did you see this as soon as it came out or did you wait till it was on Netflix slash Disney plus like a lot of people? So I waited like a week because I, I'm not a huge fan of like the, when it came out, I wasn't a huge fan of the animation style, but I saw like so many good reviews for it. I'm like, Oh, I might as well, you know, go check it out. Cause the animation style sometimes gives me headache. And when I went to see it a week later, holy shit, I fell in love with it. And I saw it three times in the theater. So I saw it the first time with a few friends. I think you were with us, weren't you? I think I, yeah, my second time, I think was your first time. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see his reaction. (laughs) So I went with you uh, first time and a few of our friends. And then the second time I went with my dad, because my dad's like, I want to go see it. And we watched it. And like his reaction was mine, which was like, this is the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And then I went to see it with my brother. And my brother was like, what the, this movie hits so hard. (laughs) And I'm just like, oh my God. And then I actually bought the DVD. Like I have the, the, what is it? The Blu-ray 4K DVD. Yeah. Even even though I I don't have a 4K player, I think. Um, This is one of those movies where you need to buy it to have it because mm-hmm. I don't know these days I feel like a lot of people don't really buy DVDs or keep like go and buy movies unless you're into that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of an outdated tradition to, to actually go and buy movies because we have databases like Netflix and HBO max and all sorts of things that we can just watch movies whenever. So but this movie right here, this is one of those where you got to go and buy it so you can just watch it whenever I, you feel like it. Yeah, and it's also like my mentality has always been because me and me and Vince here, we like long time ago we tried to get into the movie game, and we understand that like purchasing and stuff like that is really important. Like the sales are really important for them. So you know, I, I always buy a movie that I enjoyed because I'm just like it, at least it's showing that it's still selling. At least it's showing people are putting the money into it. And you know, lo and behold, they'll greenlight a sequel, and they did. This movie is getting a sequel, which is. I'm so happy about like as soon as David picked the top, what are you Clark Kent now? As soon as you pick the topic for it, <laughs> as soon as you pick the topic for it, I was like, I even, I told Vince, I'm like, dude, I'm excited. <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah. Every week we kind of scroll through IGN, Twitter, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. YouTube, see what's trending, what, what, we, what we can talk about for some reason, Spider-Verse was trending. So I suggested it. Victor DJ was like, absolutely. And, we're, we're excited to be here. Um, welcome back, DJ. Thanks for 
removing the costume and showing your true identity. Um, obviously, you know the, the topic because you picked it. So me and Victor were talking about um, the initial release of the movie. Did you go see this right away or did you wait a little bit? I saw it at the midnight screening. Like so I good. was <laughs> so excited because um, I I remember I saw the trailer. So they they brought the trailer out. I think a year before the movie was actually supposed to to come out, and it wasn't that long of a trailer. It was probably like a minute long, if yeah. that. And mm-hmm. I was just so hyped because at the end, you see this this kid. Um, with Jordans on and fucking and uh and uh he's like flying around and like try, you don't really know what's going on with it. The music is so badass in the trailer, oh and God. um and then at the end he removes his stuff and you know lo and behold, kind of looks like me. <laughs> so I was like, a little bit, you know, <laughs> you know he's he's got my skin color. He's he's got brown eyes. You know, I was just like, what? I'm what? glad they gave Miles a story finally, like on the big screen, because Miles has never really gotten a time to shine except for this movie. And then they came out with a game earlier this year for him. Mm-hmm. But I think Miles is one of the cooler Spider Man storylines. Um, he's, he's just got such a personality. He's not like he's he's just nerdy enough. He's kind of like us, I guess. Like we <laughs> we, just we can hang with the cool enough. kids once in a while, but we still yeah. have like an underlying. Uh, nerdiness to us as well, but yeah, I just you, I, he's one of my favorite Spider Mans. I'm glad he got a story. So you see it like right away, um, and even in the 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 Bender run, the Ultimates run, yeah, that they had for him when they first introduced him after the death of the Ultimate Spider Man. You see that he's like a kid that people know, and that like when you see the movie, you know, like he's known around his neighborhood like everybody likes him everybody enjoys talking to miles morales and um that's very a stark contrast to like peter parker and how Mm -hmm. he's a nerd and nobody likes to hang out with him and um he's just kind of this social leper and so Mm -hmm. we kind of get this completely different view where we get like the spider-man who's got a little swagger and if, if you follow the comic book run, he slowly kind of becomes his own Spider-Man and steps out of the shadow of, you know, Peter Parker and um, he becomes his own. And it's very cool. And it was so cool that they took him from the Ultimate Universe, which in the comics is different from the 616 uh, mm-hmm. universe, which is like the main universe. And they made him a part of it. So they ended the Ultimate run, but they decided to take him and put him into the the main continuity which is really cool that's how you know he's very popular so yeah absolutely they did a really good job at um at depicting that and kind of showing that side of him in the in the spider verse movie um dj you mentioned the trailer itself i remember being in theaters i forgot what movie i was watching but the seeing the trailer come out for the first time uh-huh. back when like it was still uh a world where we saw trailers for the first time in theaters which honestly bring me back to that time because i miss that shit so much i remember just sitting in theaters just minding my own business and all of a sudden we get a brand new spider-man animated movie coming out and i lost my shit quietly because i'm not rude but i was like oh my god this looks this looks so fucking cool i can't wait for this to come out it it had to be in a marvel movie right it had to i remember it had to be one of the was it spider-man the first one uh what is it uh homecoming no i think it might have been a sony movie because remember that was uh yeah spider-man into the spider-verse but i remember whatever movie i was watching and i can't remember the movie for the life of me but my dad was with me and (laughs) We do like a little thumbs up, thumbs down thing for movie trailers. We've done that since I was a kid. So we see a trailer and then we look at each other and we're just like. I respect and, that. And yeah, so when, that. when when I saw that, I was like, like I was hitting him on the arm and he was like. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah. So it was cool. I was I've always been excited for this. Yeah. I'm excited. You mentioned the this. the music alone in the trailer, but how about the music in the movie just in general? There's oh, some, oh, some jams in this one. There's Post Malone, mm-hmm. Juice World, Biggie, mm-hmm. like 
just, I watched it again yesterday just to get a fresh take on it. And yeah, I underappreciate the music. It's a character. It's yeah, a character it in the movie. Like every, every song that they use has importance in the scene that it's being used for. Yes. It's, there's yeah. there's not any throwaway tracks or anything like that, which you know, Sunflower became such a big hit, you know, partly because Dude, Ryan was so good. Yeah, and Ryan um, off that soundtrack is my like workout mix. Where I'm just like, was oh, cool. I'm... Um, <laughs> there were artists that made songs for that soundtrack, which I was like, normally I don't listen to these artists or these particular people. Like Nicki Minaj made a song for it, and I was like, mm-hmm. I know probably three Nicki Minaj songs off mm-hmm. off the top of my head. And the song that she made fucking slaps. So, so I was like, yeah, they right. know what they're doing. So, yeah, it's weird. Sony, like, for being Sony, they never capitalize on this. They never, I feel like Sony is a primarily music based company, or at least that's where they started, right? Mm-hmm. Was, with music, a lot of really good artists under Sony. Mm-hmm. And then they started in the, the, the movie game and the video game game um they never (laughs) they never pull off a good soundtrack really it's like what do you you have this is this is what you do this is your meat and potatoes why don't you i don't know this was like one of the only sony movies i saw where it was the music made the movie so that that movie was so weird because it's like sony has this real big track record where they fuck up movies period especially the spider-man ones they've they fucked them up from time to time uh, superhero stuff in general so this was like that weird like culmination of just like all the fucking doors unlocking and they're just like holy shit so the soundtrack got nominated for an oscar the mo- the screen the screenplay of it was nominated for an oscar it was nominated for best animated movie which it won yeah uh, which it won which it beat out pixar shit which is like unheard of you can like, never beat a pixar movie no but this movie was like nominated for a bunch of oscars because it was so well done like Sony, this I I feel like it's one of Sony's best movies they've ever done. It's it's right. arguably one of the best animated movies that have. have I was come gonna out say, yeah, night. it's it's number one on my list. Of, it's of it's highly regarded movies. in like, a lot that. of different uh, categories. Animation, Sony movies in general, like this is a good it's a good friggin' movie, man. <laughs> um, which is why we're talking about, it, obviously. Yeah. Um, what are some of your guys? favorite parts of the movies like what's the most m- kind of memorable not, well, maybe not memorable because memorable and favorite are different let's go let's go favorite what are your favorite parts of this movie and go victor first um so the movie is like star studded which is what i love and i think the person who stole the scene uh was nick cage <laughs> when they were when they were uh my favorite scene like my funny like oh my god it made me fucking laugh oh, i know what uh, you're gonna say yep entirely uh was when they're like sitting in like aunt may's living room and they're trying to discuss what's gonna happen and then miles busts through the door he's like my uncle's the prowler and he tried to kill me and you just hear nicholas cage like Aww. whoa this origin story origin story is intense <laughs> i'm just like oh my god I, I remember we watched that and I just started dying in my chair. Just like I'm like, that is was that ad lib? Like that couldn't have been in the script. <laughs> That's my favorite scene. I love Spider-Man Noir in that movie. Oh, like Best as character. far as I know, he hasn't been on screen. He's always just been in a comic book. So yeah. to kind of give mm-hmm. him a voice and then it being Nick Cage and them to portray it in that kind of <laughs> manner i don't that know that old just, timey like very it so 40s manner like he's very mm-hmm. quit popping your gums kid like it's <laughs> and then he takes the rubik's cube at the end the only like the most colorful <laughs> thing you can bring back to here it's like i don't understand this but i, I love you all <laughs> like, yeah. okay. all right mr feeney um i think my favorite part was the the uh, jumping scene, uh, the what's up danger scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, so he gets his new suit that he made and, you know, painted and he gets to the highest building and he jumps and, you know, and you have the soundtrack, like again, as a character making us fully realize that, you know, miles is finally starting to become his own spider-man he he's not wearing some hand-me-down clothes like he knows what he's doing and he's got this newfound confidence 
and the song what's up danger like he's there's this brief scene in the movie and it's like it was in the trailer but it's like five seconds of him just like the city is it's an upside down angle so it's like mm-hmm. he's falling upward and the city is below him it's just so beautiful dude yeah like it's, it's such a good it's shot so mm-hmm. amazing and then um and that whole scene you know he he's got his new web shooters and and as soon as he swings and and you see him like you see the full symbol of like his spider-man suit as like he as as he's coming up and the soundtrack just comes back in it's so fucking beautiful absolutely once again the music hyping it up Mm -hmm. he finally gets his own suit he finally is coming to his own and you get some beautiful cinematography i'll call it cinematography i mean it's animation but mm-hmm. still, i think it counts as cinematography <clears throat> it's all pull, pulling together for one big reveal f- before the uh the even last the, hurrah even the symbolism in that scene was like whoever direct whoever because someone directed that scene mm-hmm. that scene symbolism is beautiful because you are right it's him it looks for a split second like he's free falling into the city but mm-hmm. he's staring above at it and then it starts going back it's very like just the the moment that he realizes this is my leap, this I am doing this. This leap is my of leap faith. of faith. Yeah, yeah. And, this, and he's looking up just because he's and heading forward to his future. To Victor's point, which I know he's all about details. Quick little tidbit that I'm sure everybody knows, but when they were animating the movie, all of the characters that were not from Miles's world moved at different frames, or they all move except for Miles. All of the characters moved, all of the different spider people moved at a faster frame rate. And Miles moved at a slower frame rate, symbolizing that like he wasn't a fully realized like hero or Spider-Man. Mm. And in that moment afterwards, he's moving at the same frame rate as the rest of them. So it's kind of like this cool symbolism that like and there's also the symbolism of like when they first enter the spider cave, we'll call it like Peter spider cave. Yeah. Um, he's looking up at the spider man suit mm-hmm. and it makes him look smaller. And like the, the spider suit is just like towering over him. Yeah. And then when we're talking about the scene that we're talking about, you see that he's at the same height as it. It's like, it's kind of like he's grown into the suit. Like he's growing into the role of spider man. So all that symbolism and all of that, it's just so cool and it's nerdy. And it's just like, I love that they paid so much attention to detail to that shit because the real fans, like the people that actually follow these characters and love that kind of story, they're going to follow it. And so it was really cool to figure that out. Yeah. There's a lot of really good symbolism in the whole movie. Um, going back to the, the spider shed, <clears throat> Coincidentally, that is my favorite scene. Um, when <laughs> it's uh, Gwen, Peter, and Miles, uh, they meet with Aunt May and they go down to the spider shed. Mm-hmm. You get all the all the uniforms, like every single spider suit ever, and it's right. it's awesome. What is it? Peter Parker just like he's like, yeah, I have one like this. Don't worry about it. And then he looks at the spider car. He's like, is that a bit much? <laughs> yeah, there's so many <laughs> Easter eggs on the way down. They show the the spider truck. Oh my god. Yeah, um, Jake Johnson yeah, I mean, is that, a national treasure. Mm-hmm. What? Is, which one is it? Oh, Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson. Yeah, he's a national mm-hmm. treasure, dude. Jake Johnson. He's so good at ad libbing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we talked about Jake Johnson doing the voice of Spider Man before on one of our episodes. Was it the? Um, isn't it the Love, Death, and Robots episode? Did someone cast him on their their dream team. I don't know. I remember oh, editing yeah. and having. No, it was Victor. Was it? No, it yeah. wasn't me. No, nah, maybe it was, it was me. It was, I, I just remember editing and having a clip of him in studio doing all the Spider Man stuff. <laughs> I gotta watch it. It's in, I don't um, know, maybe Love. I feel love like Death that's like right up your alley, though, Victor. Like a dude that's just chilling in sweatpants saving the world. Like, that's, that's <laughs> definitely your niche. Shots fired? <laughs> Are I like not? the relaxed dude. I, like, I, I will say I did like that. Um, I liked his character portrayal of uh, Peter Parker. That's like old man Parker. I liked it. I loved it. Yeah, but, yeah. I liked it. I like the sweatpants. I mean, I like shit. Sweatpants, Who's not dude. wearing sweatpants right now? Let's be real. Shit. I'm wearing <laughs> <Yeah>. sweatpants. <laughs> We're all wearing sweatpants, Loki. 
Oh my it's god! Comfy. What it, it was a Sunday. <laughs> listen, if there's one, if there's there's a positive to take from uh, the whole pandemic, it's you know we figured out that sweatpants are mm. even more comfortable than we could possibly imagine. Yes. Yep. Um. Anyways, going back to the the movie. Um, <laughs> what do we do? We talk about music, our favorite scenes, DJ. This favorite characters. Favorite characters. That's what I wanted oh to ask God. you guys. Oh, is who who is your favorite? character in the movie not just limited to the spider people like everybody oh uh, easy okay victor the prowler god I fucking knew he was gonna say that shit one of my favorite characters this? sorry were you gonna pick it everyone here was gonna pick it wasn't it that's why i was like you want to just hold you want to just hold hands and go together because that's my favorite character too <laughs> i mean think uh, about it. you have mahershala like Ma- yeah. Mahershala um, is the voice of Prowler. I never yeah, knew that, bro. How did you oh not know? Oh my god! Oh, okay. wow! I didn't know that. Time out. Time out. Um, just so you guys know, I want you to realize how many people that were in this project are now part of Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Kate Bishop, homie. Kate Do Bishop, it. give it to us. You have the guy who voices uh, his dad. Um, his dad is is Fastos. Oh yeah, he's the Fastos. Eternals. Yep. You have Mahershala, who's going to be Blade. Mm-hmm. And you have... Oh, fuck, what's his name? I totally forgot. Oh, o- Oscar Isaac as uh, Miguel in Spider-Man Oscar 2099. Yeah. Yep. He's now Moon Knight. So mm-hmm. there, and he's there still Spider-29. And, <laughs> and Catherine Hahn, who voices uh, Liz, the the uh, her version of um, Otto Octavius. Mm-hmm. In in his universe, she's oh Agatha. my god! I oh, what the heck, man? I knew this, but I totally forgot about it. I did not realize that Catherine Hahn, who is Agatha, mm-hmm. voices Octavius or Octavia. Mm-hmm. That's so and pay, cool. And yeah, pay respects sh- to movies past. Nick yeah. Cage was Ghost Rider. Nick Cage was Ghost Rider back in the day. Mm-hmm. Listen, we just need a petition for a live action Miles Morales movie and make Shumik more Miles Morales. Got to be, got to be so down for that. Donald for Spider Man forever. Um, no, Donald, Donald for, Glover. Donald for Prowler now, but yeah, yeah, I, I think Donald would be a better Prowler, but I think well, he's, he's already, too old to play Miles. No, he's honest. already in the Spider Man universe. As, uh, yeah, yeah, Aaron he's Davis. the uncle. Yeah, yeah, that's his. That's his uncle. He's at homecoming. I remember, I remember at homecoming he mentions his uh, his nephew. He's like, yeah, my nephew lives out in Queens. I don't want nothing to happen. Oh my god! And the, Can you imagine the deleted, if they make oh, Donald Glover Prowler in, in the I'd deleted scenes? He he voice he calls his yeah. nephew and he's like hey miles i gotta yeah i'm stuck to my car Go to my yeah car. they kind of allude to him being prowler oh my god wait anyways actually, let me explain why back to back to <laughs> back to our favorite characters victor you're yeah, saying ahead. prowler i completely agree prowler is probably one of the coolest characters in the whole movie his theme is fucking terrifying too i love it i love he's a killer. whatever that noise is that they play when he appears it just sounds like, was like oh, yeah it's yeah. like a, this alarm or gears it's a siren yeah grinding together yeah i don't know it's just eerie and terrifying <laughs> it's, it's terrifying plus like his uh, his method isn't like you know how everyone else had kind of their gimmicks like his was literally like his claws his claws like he kept trying to like grab pe- grab you rip things apart with it that's what he did that was his whole mm-hmm. gimmick in the comics and what really so anyone who watched that movie and did not read comics apparently because I remember watching it and my dad's like he's the prowler and I'm like yeah I forgot you don't know that <laughs> yeah I'm like, I'm like, I know I, that. I watched yesterday again I watched it with Taylor and she's never seen it yeah. so I got to see like all her first time reactions and it was kind of fun to see someone watch for the first time but the reveal of prowler being Uncle Aaron man. <laughs> Did she cry? Did she cry no, in any of the parts? No, she was like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god. <laughs> so that what that's what makes it more painful, because you see, like for me, it was like seeing a man that, like, dude, we all we like imagine that, like, you have like a buddy of yours that's like, like just a nice guy, all this other stuff, and you find out he's a paid killer, or, or you find out your uncle is a paid killer, and it's yeah. all about the money. Like you can tell yeah. for him, it's all about the money. And then when it gets to that point where you see him holding his like holding Miles, and I felt for that part where he's just like, no man, no. and he gets shot, and he's just like, I'm so sorry, man. Like you could de- genuinely see like he felt bad. He didn't feel bad until he realized his life led him to almost killing his nephew. 
Mm-hmm. Listen, I got a oh. hot question. I got a hot question. On the roof, What's up? when Uncle Aaron, a.k.a. Prowler, has Miles in his grasp, and he and Miles reveals himself, and then he's about to kill him, right? He puts the mask back on Miles before getting shot. Do you think he would have mm-hmm. killed Miles if he didn't get shot? No. Why do you I put think, his mask back? I think he's because that's like the unspoken rule in the in like the comic universe. It's just like you gotta and he also probably realized that Kingpin was watching him, which is why he yep. was probably like, Oh, you gotta protect your identity, kid, you know? Like mm. it's a central theme in that movie too, like right from the beginning when he when Chris Pine's Spider Man is dying, and he's just like, just never reveal who you are. Like you know, always keep on the mask. Like you, you have to protect your identity, protect your loved ones. Yeah, I think that was kind of like a uh, kind of throwback to to that message. Hmm. Okay. I like okay. that. That's my. Opinion. I wasn't sure I, if also, it was one of those like I don't want to. Looking at your face makes it real. So if I don't look at your yeah. face, then I can I can yeah. kill you. Okay. So it's kind of it goes back to what I think. It's a mix of both what you and Vince are kind of saying i think it's a combination where he's like you gotta you gotta think about it like this like he is a in that superhero world his job is he's a killer and he's Mm -hmm. probably killed superheroes so when he was putting the mask back on he's just like he's like i'm not killing my nephew i'm killing i'm killing spider-man yeah and then like he kind of realized he's like that's not what i'm doing that's why he's just like he puts it on he's like that's not what i'm doing he puts him down he's just like my my nephew's safe no one saw his face and that's when he gets shot Right, and I'm just like, damn it, man! That dude had such a good arc. <laughs> well, I'll do this since Victor went ahead and stole my pick. I will uh, for favorite character. I'll talk about another character that I really enjoy, and that is uh, Gwen. I think Gwen is a really cool Spider-Man. Um, I've always had uh, a liking towards Gwen Stacy's Spider-Man. I think her her style's cool. Her backstory is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just like similar enough to peter parker's but slightly different she kind of has like a she's she's in a band i think that's kind of badass um mm-hmm. she she just has like this like cool style about her you know like she's, she's so in a band. she's in a band bro <laughs> she, she came down in a bubble and wore a crown um no you guys don't know that one Nope, absolutely not. <laughs> Come on, you guys got to know that one. But yeah, going Stacy, I got to show her some love. The uh, the reveal in the forest is cool. That whole scene in the forest is really cool too. The, mm-hmm. the cinematography with all the orange trees and Peter, or not Peter, um, Miles learning from Peter how to swing. That whole scene is mm-hmm. pretty sweet. What was it like? Just move and release, right? Wasn't it like that? Like, like that. Just like, the swing Swip. and release. release. Swing and release. Yeah, yeah something like that. Release. Um, All right. I, like it, I, like I think it. I'm going to have to go with, uh, for my favorite character, it's the Peter Parker of Miles' universe. Mm-hmm. Because if you really think about it, and I mean seriously think about this for a second, in all of the Spider-Man uh, adaptations that we've seen, whether it be animated or whether it be live action, we have never seen a fully realized Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man is always going through some shit, some trials and tribulations. He's There's always some big plot, and he's, like, not... He's not comfortable in his Spider-Man role yet. Like, mm-hmm. through McGuire and um, Holland and Garfield, like, we're always seeing that, like, they haven't gotten to that sweet spot yet. And here, I think we see the most accurate representation of Spider-Man, which is just this guy flipping around. He's joking. He's being as sarcastic <laughs> he, as possible. He's just out here flipping around, shooting he's webs. Around. He's <laughs> hey, look, it's webs. Spider-Man. He's flipping out. He's just like, he comes in, he starts shooting. Um, he's off his meds. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like his monologue in the beginning makes him sound like this very comfortable character in like his role, which mm-hmm. is cool because we're always seeing Peter Parker like, oh, I have no money. Uh, my, all my everybody hates me, you know, because I'm always late to shit because I'm literally saving the world. But I'm I won't tell around. a single person. Yeah, because I'm flipping around and I'm flipping around doing shit. But, 
but I think like this representation was pretty cool. And even towards the end, he was still being peak Spider-Man, like pissing off Kingpin, not 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 taking it too seriously until like the very end. And I thought mm. that was really cool, a very cool representation. So Chris Pines and like they used him the perfect amount. Like we didn't get mm. too invested into him. We got room for other characters, but like his death kind of tilts the story one way. So mm-hmm. it, his character serves its ultimate purpose. So yeah. he gives us that inciting incident that we need. Exactly. Spider-Man, him and him and Aaron. Death of Spider Man. Boom. Right. The death of Spider Man leads to Miles wanting to do good, and then Aaron's right. death leads him to fully realizing that he has to become Spider Man in order to do that good. Because with mm-hmm. great power, there must also don't finish that great. sentence. We get sued. <laughs> they always get it wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, um, unless you guys have any other other topics you want to talk about, I kind of want to, you know, be be me and 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 have some fun and, and talk about the future of the franchise. Um, Victor said it got greenlit. I don't I don't see that, but maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Um, I think there will be another Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse down the road. Um so let's talk about it. What what kind of storylines are we hoping to see? What kind of characters are we hoping to emerge? Um, what do what do we want? Spider Geddon. Uh, I want to. What you say? The... Spider what? Spider Denim. <laughs> spider Geddon. Spider Geddon. I thought you said it's... Spider Denim. I was like, so Spider Geddon is wearing a... jeans now. I don't get it. It's just, it's a well. We wear sweatpants. So I mean, is it really that different? It's an upgrade. <laughs> So Spider Geddon is this like mini st- mini story that takes place in in the comics, where like multiple spider people get together in order to face mm-hmm. an existential threat. Mm. So you have like the Doc Ock, the old, the Superior Spider Man, yeah, um, and then you have the like the PS4 Spider Man. You have the the cop detective Spider Man, um, Noir Spider Man, Punk Spider Man, Spider Cop. Uh, Spider Cop, what you got? Um, you have the Spider Men, which is just millions of little spiders that think no. they're Peter Parker and they're no. Spider Spider's, Spider's Man. That's Spider's Man, name. sorry. Mm-hmm. Spider's He's Man. He's made of spiders. <laughs> they all they all collectively think that they're Peter Parker. And so they all think you gotta come together because of great power. No, 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 no. Yeah, when he walks, literally, like, there's a trail of spiders that start coming right back into his costume. Mm-hmm. It's truly it's pretty gross. Sight. There's the, actually a, a the pretty person? good uh, prediction, I have to say, because they got that's up the one. Ante. That, yeah, they got mm-hmm. they got to one up the first one. And imagine and, all the people that you could come and voice those characters, and you know, yeah, right? we could get Spider Woman. You know, I think I mean? there definitely is gonna be Spider Woman, the red suit with the gold. Yeah. I could definitely see her. Coming uh, in. Riley, Riley uh, Reed, or uh, Riley, Riley. Who? <laughs> Riley, <Sorry>. Riley Reed. <laughs> Riley Reed. Sorry. Riley Reed. Where's it's it's a different just... Spider-Man movie we're talking about here? It's a different Riley. Spider-Man. Yeah, oh, that's... not, not Riley What Reed. movie was that again? Was that uh, what? Is there a <laughs> certain website that she's uh, usually attached with? What? Or... Kind of... Whatever that drum sound is. She's got like a back door. Um, uh... uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there's a well Ben Riley. In all series, sorry. Ben Riley is the Scarlet Spider. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's supposed to be dated October Riley. 7, 2020, The release date for that one, or the potential, or the hopeful release date. There, there has been a. Uh, you, there's no way of really? showing it in you since yet. Let me see your phone. Let sure. me see your conf- your confidential phone. Show it to me. Show everyone. Show everyone no, watching this right now. Show, show, show them your screen right now. Yeah, it was originally dated to be released this year, um, later on this year, but because of COVID and everything, it got pushed back to uh, October 7th, 2022. Um, I hope they do the, uh, the car, the, yeah, no, it's going to be a birthday drop. I hope it's done. Um, I hope they bring in like one of my favorite Spider-Man villain, which is Spider Carnage. Ooh, that would be yeah. cool for them to have yeah, like he- and Carnage and, and stuff. Come on, that'd be such a cool central villain, David. That'd like that, it's literally, car- yeah. it's literally the Carnage Spider Man. I a thousand percent agree. They have to pull in Vulture. I mean, they pulled in 
a lot of the other classics like uh obviously green goblin uh, negative man yes. <clears throat> scorpion made an appearance at at aunt may's house for a little bit uh, where'd he go by the way he was there and then he just I think he, he just, died did he just run off who no he, i i think Sorry, in like side, remember the battle remember in that battle in the like weird dimensional thing that they were all having a battle in mm-hmm. like he gets hit with john mulaney's hammer yes that's what happened yeah. okay. sorry anyways. i'm not gonna refer to him but... what are you some kind of cartoon <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem with cartoons <laughs> i hope spider ham comes back i don't know if they'll have john mulaney do it because you know he kind of uh John Mulaney's kind of going through some stuff right now, but I mean, yeah, knows? He's, he, I heard he did, yeah. some, he did some drugs. He went to rehab. He got somebody knocked up. He got divorced, and you know, that's typical Hollywood. So I mean, did he get a Marvel actress knocked up? Psylocke, Olivia Munn. Yeah. No way. Oh my Psylocke, god. right? Oh my yeah. god! I did not know that. That's John Mulaney that's knocked Psylocke. up Olivia Munn. Look at these connections. Yeah. How did he? How? So crazy. <laughs> How much alcohol was involved? I'm sorry. Did you not see Pete Davidson with Kim Kardashian? I mean, yeah. that I get because Pete Do Davidson. You know? because, well, like, it, it's, the, the it's the come up with the nerdy people, all I'm saying. Like, we're nerdy, the like, nerds. We're I guess so. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, they, John Mulaney, uh, Pete Davidson, uh, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, and Travis Barker have to start a fucking reality show to rival Keeping Up with the Kardashian Call of Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, well, Listen, those two are fucking rock stars. Yeah, MGK is a rock kind star. He's Travis Barker is a, le- a icon. He's a legend, dude. an icon, exactly. Link yeah. 182. Pete Gilmore Davidson is extremely. He's extremely relevant. He's funny. Like there, some people do find him attractive, which I don't understand, but it's a thing. But I'm talking about John Mulaney. I'm talking about like glass of milk, John Mulaney. What? How? <laughs> He's got that dog. old time voice that just makes everybody feel safe and at home. When We're... I watch, I'm just like, and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, We're talking believe... about glass of milk, John Mulaney. We're talking about mayo's too spicy for I can't believe Peter Porker's pork and Psylocke. This is insane. Yeah. I don't believe this for a second. Into the Mulaney-verse. Get it's real. Bro, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I remember when you took yeah. but i feel like he has if they're gonna bring that character back he has to come back like it was him he did he did that character like that's just that's the only person i could see ever doing that character oh absolutely even even noir spider-man noir i can't if nick cage didn't want to come back i'm sure they're gonna be like yeah we can't bring anyone else we'll we'll find another spider they've literally got tons of characters to choose from so like if one person doesn't come back they don't need to replace them they just need to I mean, they don't need to replace the voice actor. They just need to replace the, the character. I agree. But, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I do have a question that I wanted to ask you guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you could, and this is just a very weird question that I thought of the other day, but if you could have any of the like say you woke up and you had spider-man's powers Mm -hmm. if you could have any one of their suits which one would you have 2099 easy question that suit is the most badass suit yeah i was so happy the whole time i remember watching the movie for the first time i was like man all these spider-mans keep getting plugged here and there and there and even when they go into the shed they don't show 2099's uh uh, costume or mm-hmm. uniform, whatever. I was a little disappointed, but I was a good Marvel fan, and I stayed to the end of the credits. Uh-huh. And yeah, it you was did. Well worth it because not only did I get twenty ninety nine, but I got uh, Oscar Isaac voicing twenty ninety nine. So yeah, that's hands down my favorite one, best suit of all time. Another connection with what we just said is that Oscar Isaac also plays Duke Leto 
in Dune, which we were supposed to cover oh, yeah. last week. Oh, but yeah, these my two bad. shitheads didn't want to watch Dune, so there. Hey, I was gonna bullshit through it, so at least. <laughs> Whoa, who does that? I that Listen, <laughs> I had every <laughs> intention on watching it. I was very adamant all oh. year about uh-huh. waiting for Dune and wanting to watch uh-huh. it so bad because it's my, it's P, it's a uh, Dennis Villanueva, but I just fucking missed the boat, man. I didn't realize it was a limited viewing on on HBO. <laughs> I like how all week too, like leading up, we have a group chat and this asshole. (laughs) Fucking Lindsay is like, okay, guys, don't forget. Like, let's make sure, you know, that we're ready. Got our notes and everything. He's always keeping us on track with our shit, to be fair. I'm podcast mom at this point. I'm always like, make sure you did the did the homework. Make sure you packed it packed a snack. Like he's the mom. I'm the mischievous younger brother that's always like pulling some (laughs) shit and then you know, Victor's the mom that never seems to be on time for anything. So it's just us three. <laughs> and we're and and throughout the whole week I'm like, what the fuck is going on? like, yeah, man, we got this. We got this. We got this. Like I'm yep. so pumped. We're ready. Soccer mom and, and sweats this by fucker it. goes and he's just like, Hey, does anybody know where June is? <laughs> oh, dude, that was so about? funny. Listen, I got that in the minivan, the I picked up the kids, we went out for lunch, but I forgot the checkbook. That's what happened. <laughs> so it's so that funny. That was that was really funny. But it did lead to our our new episode, which you know I thought was very cool. And mm-hmm. um yeah, but anyways, Victor, what is your choice for your Spider Man suit? Um like from all the Spider Men, my favorite suit was probably like Noir. Like, I, if I had all those powers and they're like, "Hey, pick a suit," like I would love Noir's suit. I I like that like old timey. You can tell it's meant to more not look like a spider suit, but more of a detective, like a like an old detective's like a PI kind of getup. Yeah, yeah, like a PI. Like, and I thought it was cool. I always thought the design was really cool um each spider-man has like a specific set of powers and they also have their own little thing that they can do and mm-hmm. i always like that noir's was stealth like literally if he stands in like an area like his body will start blending into the area which i was always like that's neat um and i just always thought his story was pretty cool they uh, and his villains were very cool always seeing so i would i would definitely choose that costume because he has all of it remember this is from a universe that has all the it's noir. So all the villains that we know are noir styled, which it they're is. so fucking corny. It is. Negative Man isn't a part of his universe, right? I, I forget. Yep. Is he? Okay, yeah. Yep. Makes sense. They just call him Negative. And he's like literally like a mobster and all of his crew wears like different colors, like different like white and black to match the, the negative and positive vibe. Yeah. I love it. It's cool too. That you said that, that they all have a different kind of like one thing that makes them different. Because if you look at all their Spider-Man symbols in the comics or in the an- or animated, whatever, like all of the spider symbols look different, representing like different spiders and like how each spider is dangerous in their own way. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'd probably choose Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Uh, uh, yeah, dude i mean it's just it's it, it just looks so detailed and it looks so it looks so beautiful too man there's like a zero cgi on there too i mean if you look at holland's uh costumes they're beautiful don't get me wrong but like 20 percent of the one that he wears regularly is like cgi mm-hmm. and then but if you look at mcguire's it's just it looks so like seamless dude it looks so amazing it just looks yeah. beautiful so i would definitely want to wear that one you can see all the stitching and stuff on it too I exactly like it. yeah it's very um, <laughs> and he looks fucking jacked in it too like like fucking toby mcguire looks like <laughs> like how did toby how did pleasantville over here get pleasant ripped so he got in shape for the first two a little in fact and then he had to get a body double for the third one you can well, tell yeah, when he, he takes tired off his of mask shit. too. Mm-hmm. When he takes off his mask, his neck, you got the neck fat coming out. Yeah, because he wasn't trying to do that shit. It's the same with Ben Affleck. Like, there's no way you're going to make me wait like a year and have me maintain that same body mm-hmm. 
for reshoots. Like that's not happening. Because if you look at Ben Affleck in in the JL, in mm-hmm. the JL, oh, which one is this one? It's a bad time. That's Juice. Young Juice. Young Juice. Classic Juice. juice. Sorry. I'm sorry. I should. I, I just saw I should, the head bob over my shoulder. I was like, I'm sorry. I should definitely know each of your cats with a light shining behind them. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see him. I, I will admit. It's Jesus Cat. Um, it's Jesus Cat. Yeah. Jesus Juice. Jesus Juice. Oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> What's up? Oh, Young Jesus Juice. Mafia, Juice. Um, juice well, today. you know, guys, speaking of Jesus Juice and neck fat. Um, and Ben Affleck, um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse, another Words with Nerds issue in the books. Um, honestly, it was fun to kind of travel a little bit back in time and just talk about a classic instead of something mm-hmm. that's fresh and new. Like, we again, we've seen this so many times individually, we've had a long time to digest it and, and think about it and really know exactly why we like it. Um, and still a favorite to this day, I think, unanimously obviously by the conversation mm-hmm. but um that's really all we got to say about the movie um i'm gonna end it here and let you guys know which i should have said in the beginning but since you made it this far you did a good job um i was gonna say in the beginning you guys need to stay tuned to get this info but since you're already here and if you're already here we appreciate you but we are officially doing a raffle and you don't want to miss out on this trust me we mm-hmm. decided what we're doing and mm-hmm. honestly i told victor i was like damn i wish i could win because <laughs> i want i oh, want yeah, this funny um we aren't going to now announce exactly what it is but it is some sort of collectible thingy that you're probably going to want if you're watching this channel so in order to enter the raffle you need to do two things you need to hit the subscribe button and you need to drop a comment um it's gonna be like i want i want to say like three maybe four weeks we're gonna give people enough time we understand we're a smaller channel and that not everyone watches every single week so um give us a couple weeks i think like last third or fourth week of december we'll announce who the winner is um probably next week we'll decide what or we'll show what we're giving away but if you want what we're giving away, hit the subscribe button, drop a comment, and you're in. So, <clears throat> let me take us out there, Big V. Um, as always, thank you so much for supporting us, guys. We always appreciate you. And uh, we just want to say from the Triple S crew, it is me, Sundance Kid himself, aka DJ. It is me, Slick the Vic Rodriguez. And it's me, Space Case. Thanks for watching again, guys. We will see you with a brand new episode next week. Bye.